everybody. Today we're at the band show talking to my friend, Leslie Newman. Say hi, Leslie. Hi, Leslie. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you, Van? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. So, Leslie, we want to know a little bit about you. Okay. First of all, tell us where you're from. I live in Holyoke, Massachusetts. Massachusetts? Yes. Ooh, that's a long one to spell. It is. <laughs> and Holyoke, nobody knows how to spell that one either. Oh, yeah? So, uh, I'm sure a lot of people might not know where that is. Can you tell us a little bit about, did you say Holyoke, Massachusetts? Well, actually, I'm not pronouncing it right. It's Holyoke. Holyoke. Holyoke, but it's okay. spelled H-O-L-Y-O-K-E. Oh. <laughs> and it's a little town west of Boston. It's near Northampton, Massachusetts, which some people have heard of Northampton because the Eric Carle Museum is there. Ooh, yeah. Which kids love to go to. Very and cool. um, what I love about living there is there are so many children's book authors that live in my area. Excellent. Now, I want to ask you a little bit about what you do. Now, you're an author, is that correct? That is correct. And what got you into writing books? You know, I've always loved books. I spent a lot of time in the library when I was growing up. I read books with a flashlight under the blankets when I was supposed to be sleeping. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I just always knew I wanted to be a writer. Very cool. And w uh, so when did you write your first story? You know, my first stories were actually poems. I'm still a poet. I love poems. And my first public poems were uh, in Seventeen Magazine when I was a teenager. Wow, very yeah. cool. So, and I never looked back. You were a published teen. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, it was exciting. Yeah, so let's talk about the newest book you've got here. So this book, do you want to see? Yeah, please. Oh, very cool. So this book is called Sparkle Boy. And you can see on the cover, there's a little boy named Casey. And he loves sparkly things like shimmery skirts and glittery nail polish. I have glittery nail polish. Mm. And um, sparkling bracelets, just like his sister, Jessie. And Jessie, she thinks those things are just for girls. Hmm. But by the end of the book, she realizes that sparkly things are fun for everybody. Well, you know, I actually do have another book called The Boy Who Cried Fabulous. Ooh. And it's about a boy who thinks all kinds of things are fabulous, including pocketbooks and hairstyles and things that some people think boys shouldn't think are so fabulous. Well, but I, I disagree. I, I think this ring is fabulous. I do, too. It's sparkly and fabulous. You know, I think the more that everybody can just be themselves, the better the world will be for everybody. Absolutely. Okay, this is Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Wait, that's who was a, the president of the United States a that, long time ago, right? He, he's a man, though, right? He's a man, and this is how little boys dressed in the 1800s. Wow. Yeah, so this wasn't like for a costume party or playing dress-up or anything. This is how he was dressed. This is me. That's you. That's me. Yeah. Ah. That's oh, I me. see it now. So look. Franklin huh. Delano Roosevelt and Leslie Newman are kind of wearing similar outfits. Yeah. Right? So you see, gender expression, or how boys dress and how girls dress, hasn't always been the way it is today. Huh. You know, and actually, when I was growing up, girls weren't allowed to wear pants to school. Can you imagine? What? Yeah, we weren't allowed to. That's crazy. Yeah, so things change all the time. Well, and you know again, what? you know, what's really important, I think, is that everybody can be themselves. That's right. You want to wear pants, wear pants. You want to wear a skirt, wear a skirt. Exactly. All right. All right. High five to that. All right. Yeah. Okay, let's All right, try. I'm going to read you a haiku about a children's book. Okay. And you'll try to guess what book it is. Okay. Um, here we go. Milo is so bored, poof, magic toll booth appears with sidekick dog talk. Oh, well, that's easy because you had the word toll booth in it. That's the phantom toll booth <laughs> by my it. friend Norton Juster, who actually lives in the same area in Massachusetts that I do. R He's another a another one? Of mine. Yes. Wow. That's about all the time we have today. Okay. Lucia, thank you so much for coming on this show. Thank you for having me. You know, I've never been interviewed by a puppet before, and it was wonderful. Oh. Can I give you a hug? Absolutely. Oh. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.